happy Sunday. Welcome to Bariatrics and Tips. I am Michelle Giesen, your hostess with the mostest, ready for another Sunday Facebook Live recipe demonstration. So hopefully you are going to have a great time today. I've got a really nice menu planned for you, something that can be eaten right away and then also saved for another dinner or a lunch. So um, I look forward to sharing that with you. I look forward to this every week. I say it every week and I'm going to stand firm. Um, doing this recipe demonstration allows me to help myself menu plan, um, but also gives us access to really great recipes that don't really require a lot of what my husband would call exotic ingredients. Um, sometimes it does, but a lot of the things that I like to use are fresh ingredients and things that you can either keep in your house or something that is readily available. So there you go. If you are new to our show, welcome. I hope you enjoy our time together. You know, one thing we all have in common is that we have all had weight loss surgery or we're gearing up to have weight loss surgery. And for those of you who are just striving for overall wellness or maybe trying to live life with diabetes, it doesn't matter. You're in the right place. This is a great community that we are building. Bariatrics and Tips is dedicated to showing you how to live large while cooking and eating small and finding flavor in all that you do. And that is the big part of the equation. Um, food is just a huge part of our lives and we need to be able to coexist with it. It's not going to go anyway. It's not going to go away anytime soon. Um, but you know, just because we're given this bariatric tool or just because we have to live life, life with diabetes or any other complication, it's not a grim sentence. It's just another challenge that can be combated and you can do this, okay? The thing that we need to remember is that we don't need to be deprived of anything. I want you to remove that word from your vocabulary because when I removed the word deprived from my, voca from my vocabulary, I can't talk today, I became so empowered. Um, you know, if someone's telling you that you can't have something, you're probably going to want it all the more, right? Right. I mean, I am the classic control freak. And when the control freak loses control, it becomes a heck of a shit show. <laughs> Let's just call a spade a spade. At any rate, there's no reason why you should ever have to feel deprived of having this or that. You make the choices that affect you. And sure, we're not perfect. But if you make a bad choice, hopefully you have enough insight to be able to isolate that behavior, question it, and learn from the mistakes. We are all human and it's bound to happen, okay? But life after bariatric surgery isn't meant to be spent wishing we could have fun with this or wishing we can have this or can we have that. We can have fun with food. We can live. We can experiment. It is fun to be in the kitchen and being in the kitchen is an adventure. I know for me, it's a huge adventure. You're on your own bariatric journey and the kitchen and the grocery store are main attractions. It's empowering, absolutely liberating to be able to cook a new dish that you've never made before and for it to turn out amazing and for it to really nourish your body. But it's even more empowering for you to do that same exact thing, either with a new recipe or something that's tried and true, but have your family go gaga over it. And trust me, it happens. It can be done, okay? This is our second chance, our chance to live life to the fullest. Um, just to recap real quick, for those that don't know, I had gastric bypass surgery. April 22nd of 2015. That is called my rebirth day. It is what allowed me to have any true subsequent birthdays since. And I just turned 50 last week and I am living life to the fullest, okay? I celebrate my rebirth day. I celebrate my regular birthday. I have taken back my life and I have embraced this permanent lifestyle change. I've lost 130 pounds. I have kept it off 
And I've worked really hard. The journey's been good and bad and ugly, but I have no regrets. I have no regrets, but I have insight. And like I said before, I make mistakes. My make mistakes, kind of like today with me being tongue-tied. <laughs> and I make decisions that maybe sometimes aren't the best, but the difference is, is I can nip them in the bud and I can get back on track so much easier. And I've dedicated my Facebook Live recipe demonstrations and our Bariatrics and Tips Facebook page to sharing these ways with you, okay? It is worth the time and the effort because I know I'm worth the time and the effort and I know that you are too. So Bariatrics and Tips has a lot of exciting things in the works. We are trying to grow our presence on Facebook. Um, there are a lot of things that are on the horizon. I am assuming that if you're watching this today, it's because you are liking and following our Bariatrics and Tips Health and Wellness page on Facebook. We do have a private page too that has over 3,000 members. And I'm asking if you're one of those 3,000 members, please like and follow our public health and wellness website page on Facebook. This is where it's at. This is where all the demonstrations are gonna take place. This is where all the recipes that are gonna be shared. And then all the tricks and tips too. So um, I want you to have a front row seat to this and liking and following and sharing our page will give you just that, okay? So remember, if you need any specific medical guidance, um, certainly loop in your surgeon and dietitian because they obviously know what's best for you on a medical standpoint. But if you have anything, any questions or want any feedback from your peers or from myself or any of us followers on Bariatrics and Tips, don't hesitate. Send me a message, post it on our page. If you created or tried a new recipe, share it, okay? This page is not for just me to make postings. It is for all of you, okay? So I wanna move forward with our show and spotlight one of our followers. Um, the Sunday Spotlight is a weekly segment where I like to focus on someone else's success. And this week I have chosen Mary Bowman. Mary is actually a friend of mine. We haven't met in person yet. We attend our local bariatric support group um, and right now, because of COVID and all that, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's weekly, but it's online through Microsoft Teams. Um, but it's funny, a lot of these ladies and guys that are in that support group um, have become friends, and we share a lot of stuff in, in that 60 minutes a week, and so I feel like I really know them. And Mary actually posted um, on a, a private group that we're part of through the Bariatric Hospital, she posted her biography and after I read it, and I was in tears, let me tell you, um, I sent her a message and I'm like, Mary, I've got to feature you on bariatrics and tips. May I do that? And she said, absolutely. So she's kind of got, she kind of has a, a little bit longer of a story. So I'm going to try and get through it. You're actually going to see a recap of this on our bariatrics and tips page. I think at four o'clock or five o'clock. It's something new I'm gonna try. Everybody who is featured on our Spun Sunday Spotlight will have a post to recap their success so you can see how they shine like the stars they are. And you know, if you do get featured for the Sunday Spotlight, you get a free Bariatrics and Tips logo magnet. So I'm happy to do that for you. If you're interested in it, certainly let me know. Send me a message, either Michelle Geeson or through Bariatrics and Tips, and I will hook you up, I promise, okay? So now let's shift over to Mary Bowman. Um, Mary says that her highest weight was 270 pounds. That was many, many years ago. She eventually got down to 250 pounds. She stayed there for quite a while, but unfortunately she had um, a drug addiction that kind of stopped her in her tracks. She got down to 180 because of that, um, and she promised that she wasn't gonna put it all back on, but she says after that whole ordeal, she gained most of it back. Um, she tried other diet plans like Beachbody. It wasn't anything that she really deemed for her. 
um, she had a hard time being consistent and that's a huge part I, I know when I look back on my journey and I'm certainly sure that all of you had problems with consistency too I know for me sometimes it's easy to go the distance for weeks and weeks and then something happens and you fall off I totally get it Mary um, but last year she talked to her doctor about the surgery and he could see that she with the medical issues she had she was told that her insurance would approve it so she was pretty excited she did her evaluations her blood work her um, her preparatory things that her insurance required and finally the day came where she could have weight loss surgery um, she had the surgery April 15th of this year so happy rebirthday Mary she's just a spring chicken in the rebirthday <laughs> age um, she said that her surgeon who I have worked with too before because he's part of my practice um, actually gave her pictures of the surgery so Mary we have to talk about that because that's way cool she said she was in the in the hospital for two days and then she was home um, she said most everything went smoothly um, First, she saw 20 pounds gone, and then she saw 30 pounds gone, and now here it is four months later, and she's down a whopping 58 pounds. Um, she says she notices it more in certain areas than others, and she's definitely seen some loose skin, but it's all good, she says. She's been able to go down a few sizes um, from a 2 or 3X down to an extra large, and that's huge, Mary. That is absolutely magnificent. You should be so proud. Um, she asked, she was asked recently if she had any regrets. This is the question that I always like to ask. Um, there are a slim few that say they have, but she says no, no, no. I mean, not just no, but no, no, no. She has had no regrets. Ups and downs, good and bad, she would not change a thing. She's no longer diabetic. Um, her uh, cholesterol meds have been cut in half her as well as her blood pressure meds her pre-surgery weight was 228.4 and she currently weighs 170 so she is well established in Wonderland she's lost 58 pounds she doesn't know how many inches that she has lost but she's happy and excited um, she's still working on things like depression and anxiety but she's really excited to continue on her journey. And I'm so proud of you, Mary. She did a little photo collage that I'm gonna come around and show you. And I'm so impressed. You can really, you can really tell a difference. Um, you can see all these different ones, but if you look at the bottom right, you can see her now picture. And then everywhere, like around the perimeter of the square, you can definitely see um, her at a heavier weight. So good job, Mary, I'm so proud of you. All right, so Mary gets her magnet this week. I will send that out as soon as she furnishes me with her address. And to Andy, who was the subject of last week's Sunday Spotlight, I totally forgot to mail your magnet and I've got it addressed and yours and Mary's are going out tomorrow. I promise, end of story, magnet rant over. So let's go into our recipe demonstration. There's not a lot of preparatory things that I'm going to show you because while it is a little bit of a labor intensive um, preparation for the tuna and salmon patties, it is all done for you, but it goes fairly fast. There's just a lot of steps. And really it all depends, a lot of the time factor is whether or not you plan on using fresh salmon fillet. Um, I am cheap, I will tell you that right now, and my intention was to use fresh salmon, and I was gonna make it and do everything that I needed to, and when I got to the store, it was not on sale. So I balked, and I ended up buying canned salmon. But the great part of this recipe is you can use canned or fresh salmon, just like you can use canned or fresh tuna. So these can be used interchangeably, and I think you're really gonna like the recipe, okay? It is almond crusted salmon cakes. I developed this recipe for myself. It's pretty protein rich. I used a, um, I, this makes 18 salmon cakes. And the nutrition that I give you is gonna be based on the ingredients that I'm going to tell you, and a three ounce serving. And I used this three ounce large scoop 
it is a pampered chef scoop, but everybody and their brother make these. Um, I actually have three of them. I have a one ounce, two ounce, and three ounce one, and I opted to use the three ounce to make these cakes. So each one is uniform, so it's definitely advisable that you use some sort of scoop so you can get the maximum, so you can get equal amounts. But I'll run down the recipe list, and I have a few things that I want to show you, show and tell, um, and then I'll show you the final product because they are delicious. Um, so if the first thing you're going to do is you're going to do a pound, a, a one pound salmon fillet. And if you're not going to use fresh salmon, I used two, um, I think they are 14 ounce cans of salmon. And you have to make sure that you take the skin off and the bones out. And so when you open it, you've got all the juice and then you've got this chunk of salmon that you can kind of open up with your hands and you can kind of get all the, um, the slimy skin off and if you pry it open you'll see like the bony spine and you can totally take that out too um, and then once you do you just plop it into a bowl so the directions on the recipe tell you how to make the salmon but if you're not hold on what is it I cannot wait to make this huh <laughs> Melissa you are always so sweet um, so you want to make sure that you have your oven preheated um, to 425 but before you preheat it to 425, um, make your almonds first so that they're ready for you. And I roasted the, or toasted the almonds at 350 for about 12 minutes. Um, and these are sliced almonds. And this is what I have, um, and I can come and show you. I don't know, do you, I, I'm obviously assuming that everybody knows the difference between sliced almonds and slivered almonds, which I have as well. Okay, so I actually opted to use the sliced almonds. I liked it better because I ended up dredging the top of the patty or the cake into the almonds, and I think the sliced ones made a better presentation. And I'll show you. So you are going to toast your almonds until they're golden, and the directions definitely show that. Um, you don't have to spray them with oil or anything. You just put them on a cookie sheet lined with parchment paper, throw it in 350 for 10 to 12 minutes until they're golden brown. You don't want them to be burned. The, the toasting them brings out the flavor in these almonds and it makes a pretty color too. So once you have those out and you're letting them cool, hike up your oven to four and a quarter because now you're gonna get ready for the salmon. Um, if you have the fresh salmon, you're gonna go ahead and cook it first. Um, also on a baking sheet lined with parchment paper. Parchment paper makes baking so much easier. I have vowed, as God is my witness, I will seriously, I'm like Scarlett O'Hara, as God is my witness, I will never be without parchment paper again. Seriously, hold me to it because I've got two massive rolls in my cupboard that I got from Sam's Club because I will never be without parchment paper. Um, so once the salmon is made, or if you've got the salmon, the canned salmon prepared, you are going to um, put that in a bowl, and then you are going to heat your skillet with one tablespoon of oil. I used avocado oil in this exercise, one, because it's got a high heating point, and two, because it just seemed like it would be really flavorful and I just bought avocado oil for the first time and I wanted to try it so <laughs> that's why I used it um, you want to just take a tablespoon of your avocado oil you could even use less if you want and just saute your finely diced red pepper and yellow onion and once that's done let that cool when it's cool you can throw it in with the salmon concoction and then you're gonna add your the rest of the ingredients so we've got salt and pepper to taste We've got um, the onion and the bell pepper that I already told you. We've got a half a cup of almond flour. There is no traditional white flour in this, um, and that's how we're keeping the carbs down. We are also gonna add two scoops of casein protein powder, and the reason why I'm using casein is because it simulates flour, and it's wonderful and it ups the protein content. Now this is optional, but remember when I give you the nutrition information, it's gonna include the casein. It also ups the um, salmon cake by I think 
a gram and a half of protein per piece. So a nice little protein boost, boost also. Um, you're gonna add a quarter cup of the sliced almonds. That doesn't go into the concoction. Those toasted almonds you're gonna actually use separately. Um, two large eggs, slightly beaten, a tablespoon of olive oil mayonnaise, and that kind of just helps bind everything together. So between, between the almond flour, the casein powder, and the olive oil mayo, you get something that will kind of bind. Um, a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce, just for flavor purposes. I'm actually not a fan of Worcestershire, but a teaspoon was perfectly doable and added some really nice flavor. And then two tablespoons of fresh uh, chopped dill and a quarter cup of minced fresh parsley. Okay, and you're gonna mix all those goodies together until you have this concoction and hopefully it's looking like you can pack it and make a, a burger with it essentially. Um, and if you find that it's too runny, you might need to add a little bit more almond flour or casein, it's, it's up to you. But I did exactly what the recipe said, the way that I created it, and it turned out beautiful. Okay, so all I did was scoop, I scooped the salmon concoction, and then I took the scoop and I turned it onto the flat surface where the almonds were, just so that it pressed some of those sliced almonds, sliced toasted almonds, into the top of it. And then I put it in an electric skillet with one tablespoon of avocado, bleh, avocado oil. And all I did was let it cook in there for about one to two minutes per side just to get golden brown. And then I took it out of the skillet. And then I baked them the rest of the way. Now, you want to make sure if you run out of oil, you can put another tablespoon of avocado or your favorite oil on there. I did it one tablespoon at a time, and so I used a total of three tablespoons of avocado oil. I used one for, um, I used them, yeah, I used a total of three tablespoons, and that's what the nutritional facts um, reflect. So once you are done uh, kind of frying them in the electric skillet just for one to two minutes, just until they get golden brown, you transfer them back to that 425 degree oven and you can cook it for another 10 to 12 minutes. And I did it for, uh, for a good 10 minutes and it looked beautiful. They were a golden color. I've got them right over here that I wanna show you. And then when they're done, you can put them on your serving platter and just add a little bit more fresh parsley just for color. Um, you can serve it with Greek yogurt. You can serve it with some guacamole. That's what I had it with today. And it's funny because usually I wait until after our segment to eat, but I couldn't. There's, I think there's, um, I ate two of them. I ate two of them and it got me pretty darn full. So let me run down the nutritional content for you. Each salmon cake weighed in at about 116 calories. So I ate two of them, so you're looking at about 230 calories for my lunch, which I thought was fantastic. Um, so 116 calories each, seven grams of fat, three grams of carbs, and then 11 grams of protein per salmon cake. So that made me really happy. I love creating recipes where they are carb low and protein rich, and I'm not completely against the whole carb concept. I just like to keep refined carbs at bay and then all around carbs down because I know what happens to me. Um, I had a horrible dumping syndrome incident this past week um, with my, I had a, I had a taste of, what was it? It was blueberry zucchini bread, homemade from a friend of mine. And seriously, it was one of the most delicious things I've ever had. And she makes it pretty health conscious, but I had more than one piece. And I, let's just say it didn't go well. And so that's what happens to me when I succumb to good carbs. So I try to keep them down. So you'll see my recipes reflect that as well. So that's the scoop. That is the recipe for you. I'm going to show you the fruit of my labor. I'm going to probably have to come around. So I'm going to do that. Here 
are the salmon cakes. Don't those look phenomenal? And they're, I mean, they're a decent size. Hold on, there, Do -do -do. But you can see how the toasted almonds just kind of lay on top and they form a really nice crust. And then let's get one of these bad boys in here. And then, hello, I'll open it up for you too so you can see the consistency. Whoops, wrong way. So there you go. Doesn't that look amazing? I think they're amazing and they are super good. They taste really good with some Greek yogurt with dill. Parsley and dill really um, complement any kind of fish. And you can make these with tuna too. So if you would rather use tuna, I did buy a couple cans of albacore tuna. I was gonna make both, but then these made so many, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna bring them to work. Um, I like eating, this is my, this is my, I don't even know if it's like a secret or just whatever, don't judge me. I actually like salmon and tuna cakes cold better than I like them warm. Don't get me wrong, I love them warm. Right off, right out of the oven, they were delicious. But cold, oh my gosh, I love them so much. So it'll be great to be able to take these to work with me starting tomorrow. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed today's recipe demonstration. Let's talk about what we have on deck. Um, next week we are taking the week off. I will be out of town at a girls weekend um, with my two, two of my besties um, and I can't wait. So we will reconvene on Sunday, September 5th um, for a demonstration called Not Really Fried Rice and it's going to blow your socks off. Um, the following week, September 12th, we're going to do Mongolian beef. And funny enough, I made this for dinner last night, and it never disappoints. It's freaking amazing. <laughs> um, September 19th, spaghetti squash pizza cups. Pizza is one of my favorite things, and I have found that it's not even the bread that I miss. It's just the, the tastes of the sauce and the cheese and the herbs. And then Sunday, September 26th, fofo with um, my favorite Asian soup. So my dog just scared the bejesus out of me. My husband's coming in the front door. But we're going to wrap things up. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I so appreciate you taking the time. I hope you have a great week. Experiment in the kitchen. Have fun at the grocery store. Menu plan. And really seize the day in your own journey, okay? Thanks for having me with you. Have a great weekend, okay? Bye-bye.